Hey guys, Will here with Cray Studio, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a 3D character animation inside of Cray Studio Pro. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and play back what you're going to be creating. All right, so we've got some text that comes in, animates nicely, and then we've got our 3D character animating the slides as the text comes in and out. And then we've got some uh, shape um, symbols here that we can recreate as well as the background. So let's go ahead and delete this and get it started from scratch. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I need to create a background. So let's go ahead and create a shape here. We'll do a rounded rectangle. And then I'm gonna select my rounded rectangle here and I'm gonna expand it to the size of my canvas. All right, so once I've got that uh, done there, I'll expand this out a little bit. And let's go ahead and select our rounded rectangle and let's come over here to settings and let's change the color, right? You can make this any color you want that whatever fits your project needs. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to one of my favorites here and it's this kind of sky blue color, just like in the original we just saw. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and rename my rounded rectangle to stay organized and we'll just call this background and then I'll just leave it at this track right here. All right, now my next step is to get my character. Okay, so what I can do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to studio and then under characters, it can be, you can look in 3D or you can search if you know the name of your character. For me, I'm looking for the character Jack. So I'll search for Jack. If you haven't downloaded your character, let me delete this so you can see. Um, you'll see that there's a download icon in the bottom right corner of whatever character you select. Just make sure you select that download first and then let it download the assets. And then from there, you'll be able to drag in the animation into your canvas. All right. So once you've got your animation dragged in, let's go ahead and change what type of animation it's going to be. Right now, he's doing this wave, but that's not what I want. So I'm going to select my character animation in my timeline, come over here to settings, and you'll see I've got some actions, right? So I'm going to select in here where it says wave, and it'll open up all of the animations that are available to me to use inside of Cray Studio Pro. Now I'm looking for the one that says holding a card. So I'm gonna select that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and expand out this uh, character animation just a little bit here to match kind of the background. I'm gonna originally want him to display three rotations of this animation, but I'll get to that in a second here. All right, so next up, I need to change the direction of which the title card is being held, right? So right now it's being held on towards the right side of the screen. Now if I select this, uh, button up here above the animation, it'll change him to face the opposite side, right? Which is pretty cool. All right, so that's kind of what I'm looking for in this animation. Now I need to resize Jack himself, right? He's a little small. I need to scale him up, kind of make him like a medium shot. So I can do this in two ways. I can select my character animation here in the timeline, and then I can either A, drag my resizing squares on the corners, and then kind of just drag and scale them up and move them down to the right size that I want, which is pretty quick and easy, right? Another way if you wanted to do it by hand is that you could go and select your character animation, your timeline, go to uh, your properties, and then you can scale them up by dragging the cursor there along uh, the scale there, right? So that's an option, just different ways to do different things. Again, whatever works best for you. All right, so I think I'm looking pretty good right there. Um, I could probably make them a little bigger here. There we go. Works out for me. Looks pretty good. All right, so now that I've got my background, I've got my character in there, I need to add some text. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to my text tool and create a text box. All right, so once I got my text in there, um, I can move it onto my title card so I can see what I'm working with. All right, so the next thing is I need to add some text or type some text in there. I've already got some text written out, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it into our text box here. So that way, uh, we don't have to see me type for the whole time. All right, so now that we've got some text in, I'm gonna move it down into my timeline and then resize it and change the font as we go through. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure this is left justified to start off with. I'm gonna cover to my fonts and I'm gonna change this to pop-ins. All right, so I'm gonna select pop-ins and I'm gonna change my weight and let's make it uh, semi-bold, right? And then I can always resize by dragging on the resizing squares to fit in my uh, title card here. And you can get a little more fancy with it if you want. You can adjust like line spacing, line height, like I could kind of spread them out a little bit just to fit the card a little better. Um, just depends on what you want to do. All right, so that is my first title card there. All right, so if I play this back right now, nothing fancy happens, but I need to find out when the title card opens up. So right there is when I want the text to kind of animate in here in a second. So I'm gonna move that over just a little bit. And now I want to go ahead and create a little animation in the beginning there. So I'm gonna, with my text selected, come over here to motion and I'm gonna come over here to saved and choose 3D lettering. And then I'm gonna choose letter and then forward and everything in here stays the same. Just make sure use fade, uh, use fade is checked. 
All right, so now if I play this back, there we go, and it's looking pretty good. All right, so just make sure you got yourself enough time in there so when the card pops up, like I could even zoom in a little bit and make this a little tighter too. So card comes in and we'll have it start to play about right there. So now, there we go. That's better. And we can speed this up too if we want by dragging in our 3D lettering animation a little closer to the beginning. And now we're looking good. All right, so now we need to animate the text as it comes off screen, right? So as we get to about right here, he pulls his hand up and swipes that card down. So it kind of tilts to the right a little bit and then it drops off, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find that part where the card starts to tilt right before. And then on my keyboard, I'm gonna type R to add a rotation keyframe, right? And then on the first one, I'm gonna leave it as is. On my second out keyframe, I'm gonna adjust that and change the properties of this rotation to be seven, all right? So now, you can see it rotates, but I need to adjust the speed of that. So let's go ahead and pull this second end rotation in a little bit more, just so it kind of matches the speed of the card. And we're looking pretty good so far. All right, we could even zoom in a little more and make this a little tighter if we want to. Let's pull that in. There we go. All right, so now let's trim in our text and then we're going to go ahead and group this, all right? So let's go ahead and right click it and then select group, all right? And let's rename this and let's call it uh, text one, all right? There we go. All right, so now I need to create an exit animation for this text so that it will drop off with the title card at the same time, right? Now, now it just kind of disappears um, in a not so nice way. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select text one, go over here to motion, go into position and then choose, or on the out, sorry, I should make sure you select out, go to position and then click on the bottom. All right, now for our easing, you can go ahead and change this to sign if you like, kind of play around with the different easing options if you like. Um, and then so what I can do is I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit and I may have to drag this out just so it matches a little better, but you'll see it drops off there, right? But let's go ahead and drag this whole thing out just a little more. There we go. So now that our exit animation's in nicely and then we're kind of flowing off the screen. There we go. All right, so that's text one, right? So if I play this back, you'll see it comes in, the text plops up, and then it drops off with the uh, animated title slide out, right? All right, so now things can get a little easier because we don't have to recreate this text. Again, what I can do is I can duplicate the text and then just kind of tweak it as we go, uh, depending on what we need to do. All right, so I'm gonna select my text in my timeline and I'm gonna select duplicate. All right, so now I'm gonna take this duplicated text one and drag it right next to uh, this new, and let's go ahead and rename it now so we don't get confused. Rename, and let's call this one text two. All right, so first thing is let's replace the text that we've got. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy the text that um, I've already got written out so that way y'all don't have to see me type a bunch of stuff. Um, so let's go in here and then let's go ahead and paste it in there. And here is our text that we've got so far and I can you know move this around and resize it as I need to. Um, to make it fit and the scale of our box here. All right, so now let's go back to the main timeline and you'll see here that I've got my text in there. It's looking pretty good actually. And if I select it, go to my, uh, my properties and my motion here, um, you'll see that I can change the text here if I need to, if I need to change the lines for anything I need. Um, or I can always go into my group here and make adjustments um, as needed as well. Um, and that could be for the font. You can see it still says pop in semi bold. Um, we've still got all the settings that we need to, but I can go in here and just anything that I may need, including the 3D lettering that we had previously added. All right, so let's go back in here and let's see how this flows because we might need to make some adjustments to our text two animations to make sure that they flow right. So first we got text one, that one's good and it comes in. We've got text two, that one comes in, it looks nice. But our text two animation out does not line up properly, right? So he starts about right here. So what we can do is just drag out our guy here. And you can see we ran out of space. So if I go back in here, I can then just drag this guy out to fit the scene there. Now let's go back to our timeline and let's see what that looks like. Almost in, in line there. But we can see that our keyframes need to be adjusted because they're starting before our stop happens here. Actually, this is where it actually starts to change. So let's double click in here with our cursor lined up. Let's go ahead and zoom in here so you can see 
Now I'm going to put my cursor between both my keyframes and just drag them over so they start there. Okay. So now if I go back to the main timeline, you'll see that everything should, it's getting pretty close, right? So let's just drag this out a little more and then that should be pretty good. A little bit more. There we go. All right. So we've got a good foundation for our first text, right? And our second text. So let's play this back and see everything's looking good. And we've got a swipe off there. Text comes back in and then we swipe out there. All right. So, so far so good. Now let's go ahead and add text three. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select text two and then I'm going to select duplicate again on my timeline, drag the duplicate of text two right next to uh, on this track here. And I'm going to right click this and then click rename. And let's go ahead and title this text three, just so we're not confused. So we've got text one group, text two, and now text three. All right. So my next step is to replace this text two information with text three, right? So you can type in whatever information you may have. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the text that I've already got pre-written. So let me go in here and replace that guy with this new information. All right. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and scale out here. That way we can see what it is I have and I'm going to scale it down so that I can then fit this in a little better. All right. So once I got that in there, let's make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this a little bit more by going to my uh, line height and I'm just going to stretch them out just a little bit between the space between each other, just so it fills out the space a little nicer. All right, so now I can come back to my main timeline here and then I can then of course select this text and scale it up a little more if I need to. All right, there we go. Looking pretty good. All right, so we've got our third text in. Now let's see if it lines up nicely with the animation. So I'll play it out, comes back in and then it swipes off. All right, so, so far so good. We've got our text in there um, and we've got our character. We've got our backgrounds. Now let's add those uh, shapes, those little, um, triangle and squares that we saw in the original scene. So what I can do is let's move up a little bit and let's go ahead and go and create a new shape here. Let's create a square. All right. Now let's put this at the beginning because this is going to play the whole length of our track here. All right. So what I can do is I can select this square and now my square is going to be white, right? So, uh, now I'm only going to have a border for this square. So the interior is actually going to be transparent. There's nothing going to be anything in there. So I'm just going to drag my slider here all the way to transparent. And as you can see, you're like, well, where's everything at? How, how do I get the, the, the border back? Right? So what you do is once you've got your color set on transparent here, then you come down here, change your color and let's make it white for your border color. And let's go to our border width, and we're going to make our border width about eight, right? So I'll type eight right here. And there you can see, I've got that. And then we're going to scale it down, right? So our square is going to be at about three. Okay. So now if I zoom in, you can see there is my square and then I'm going to go ahead and just drag this guy uh, down here in the corner of his title slide. So he's just going to sit. Well, let's kind of bring this up here because he's going to be fitting in right about here. Okay. So we'll put that square there and then let's go ahead and just duplicate that. So we'll go ahead and select our square, click on duplicate and then drag the duplicate and let's just put him right here. All right. So we're kind of just placing these and you can get creative and move them around however you feel like you need, they need to be, but this is where I'll put the squares. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new shape. So I'll go back to shape here and we're going to create a triangle. And in this similar process, we're just going to change the color of the border and make our interior transparent with the triangle. So again, click on your triangle that we just created, go to color in your settings and then make its color transparent. And then we're going to come over here and our scale is going to be five on our triangle and our border color is actually going to be this yellow color. And we're going to make our, uh, our border width is going to be eight as well. All right. So we'll go here. So here is our triangle and I'm just going to move him probably like right here. And then let's go ahead and select our triangle that we created and click duplicate. So we have two of them and then I'm just going to drag that duplicate and put that guy about right here. Okay. So now we've got some different shapes going on, some different elements and you can move them around. You know, it's creativity based on what you think the flow of it needs to have. But this is kind of how our setup will look right. But as you can see, 
my my square is because I didn't pay attention to this you can see and this is good good to correct is that it's in his animation already so what I can do is find that square which is the second one here and then just move him to the side a little bit more so he's not on top of my animation right so now I can play there we go it's looking good scrolls down everything's doing what it's supposed to looking really nice and bam we're good all right so my next step is let's go ahead and group these shapes so they're not all over the place and it's not taking up all my timeline space so let's go ahead and select all of the shapes right here and then I'll right click them click group and then now let's right click our group and let's click rename and let's just call this shapes so we know that these are where all the shapes are located and so far so good all right all right next step let's get some sound in here all right so I'm gonna add a sound effect to every time that the text comes up when he swipes for a new card right so we should have three sound effects total so I'm gonna come over here to my media and I'm gonna drag in my sound effects that I've got here. All right, so here's my first sound effect and it's gonna play about right here. So I'm just gonna see if that, that works out. There we go. And then I will go ahead and duplicate it, right? And we can go ahead and move it to our second spot, which is gonna be about right here as well for the second one. So I'll pull my cursor. Here's where the second text pops in. So let's go ahead and put it about right there nice and then we'll go ahead and duplicate this one more time and then let's go ahead and put it where the third text pops in which is about right here okay so then we'll go here and let's see what happens there we go all right so that's how we can add sound and just kind of liven up our animations a little bit as well so now the last thing to do is let's go ahead and group everything together right so let's go ahead and also if I right click on my timeline remove excess tracks to clean up my timeline now let's go ahead and select everything. So I can hit Command A, but it didn't select my audio file. So if I want to select anything that hasn't been selected, I can hold Command on the keyboard and then just select with my mouse left click on each one of those. And then now I can right click anywhere on these tracks, hit Group, and we shall rename this and call this our Master Animation. All right, just so you know what it is we have. All right, so now when I play this back, I can then have a nice clean setup for my animations, for my text, and it's looking pretty good. All right, so one thing I can do is if I select my master group here, and I come over here to the right side under settings, you'll see I could change my background, I could change the text out as I need, um, but if I look at the squares, I see the transparent layers, but I don't see the yellow and the white that I already have them in, um, and I see all four. I need to, I, what I can do is I can make some adjustments to where I only see one square and one triangle, so that I only can change one color at a time, right? So what I can do is I can go into my gear icon here and then under our easy edit properties, um, you can see that I've got the fill selected to be shown, which is why we see the transparent part of it. Now what I can do is select our borders here, right? So that those get shown as well and then deselect our fill, all right? And then on my squares, I can link my second square to the first one and then I can link my second triangle to my first triangle so that now I only have the uh, borders for the square white and then the border for the triangle yellow. So now if I wanna change the color, I can, which makes it really awesome if you're trying to save for your scenes, right? All right, so that is how you can create a really cool 3D animation inside of Create Studio Pro, kind of help with any kind of future projects you may have. Um, so let's play that back one more time. And that is the animation that we just created. So hopefully you all had some quick tips out of here. And um, I can't wait to see what y'all create, and I'll catch y'all in the next tutorial.